So now we're going to get to the, the last section here inside of this particular chapter, and or in, in this section, and that's distributing objects into boxes. Now, we don't really actually want to do a lot of distributing of objects into boxes. It's kind of a mundane activity, right? But from a mathematical perspective, right, it actually is, uh, you know, kind of handy to think about, right? Uh, that we're going to take either distinguishable objects and putting it into distinguishable boxes or indistinguishable objects into indistinguishable boxes or distinguishable and indistinguishable. There, there's a lot of different permutations. There's four of them in particular. We're only going to look at two of them, though. They're only going to be looking at two of them for the purposes of this class. And the first one here is this distinguishable objects into distinguishable boxes. Okay. Let's say I want to answer this question. How many ways are there to distribute hands of five cards to each of four players from a standard deck of cards? Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh, well, okay, let's think about this for a second. I've got basically four slots. Player one, player two, player three, and player four. Okay. So for player one, if we think about it, any deck of a hand of five cards, the order in which those cards are dealt out is not going to matter. It's only what the five cards actually are. So that's going to be a combination. C, 52, choose five. Okay. Next up, right, though, now I only have 47 cards because I've dealt five cards to player number one. So it's going to be C of 47, choose five. My third player, he's now only going to have 42 cards to choose from, right? And that's 42, choose five. And the fourth player is going to have C of 40, uh, excuse me, 37, choose five, because he's only got 37 cards remaining, okay? Then, since we've got the four players, we're just simply going to multiply all of them together. What this is going to end up giving me is it's going to end up giving me, it's going to be 52 factorial, okay? divided by 5 factorial, okay, times 47 factorial, right? Remember, that's a combination. That's how we do them. But right? then 47 factorial divided by, and this will be 5 factorial for the 5 cards, divided by 42 factorial, right? These two have to add up to 47, which they do. Multiplied by 42 factorial now for the 42 cards that we can choose from, divided by 5 factorial, divided by, in this case, 37 factorial, okay, times, and this will be 37 factorial, divided by, again, 5 factorial, okay, times 32 factorial for the 32 cards that we now have left over. When we go through, we're going to cancel, okay, and what we're left with is 52 factorial divided by 5 factorial, 5 factorial, 5 factorial, 5 factorial, 32 factorial, okay? And that is our equation. Notice, okay, and this is basically what's going to happen when we have distinguishable objects into distinguishable boxes, right? We've got the total number of objects that we're going to be actually distributing. We're going to divide by how many we have in each one of the boxes, okay? Factorial for all the different uh, ways that we can order them. And then divided through by all the different ways that we can actually order everything that's left over. So the idea here is, is that we've placed five objects into each one of the boxes, okay, right? And each one of the elements inside of the boxes can be, fact, uh, can be um, ordered in a certain way, hence the five factorial. But then also we've got the 32 left over, right, okay, that can actually also be um, ordered in a particular way, right? Or has, you know, an amount of redundant orders as well, right? doesn't matter what's in the discard pile, if it's ace and ace of spades and king of spades, or if it's king of spades and ace of spades, that order doesn't matter in the discard pile either, okay? So consequently, we've got to factor, we've got to divide out those remaining ones as well. So this gives us a theorem, and this theorem says the number of ways to distribute n distinguishable objects into k distinguishable boxes so that ni objects are placed into the box, i equal to 1, 2, all the way to k, equals n factorial divided by n1 factorial, so n1 being the number of objects in the first box, n2 factorial being how many uh, objects are in the second box, all the way down to nk factorial. In our example, we actually had, even though we had um, five players playing, 
right? The sixth box is the discard pile. That is all the cards that are remaining that we actually did not distribute out to any individual player. You do actually have to take into account those, right? And N1 through NK, okay, um, while they don't have to actually uh, add up to N, right, you should consider whether or not that that's actually going to be the case. Do N1 plus, right, is the summation of N1 to NK going to actually equal N? In our case, it did, and so we actually had to account for the fact that we had that discard pile, right? Let's take a look at an ex another example. So let's look at this problem. A professor packs her collection of 40 issues of a mathematical journal in four boxes with 10 issues per, per box. How many ways can she distribute the journal if the boxes are numbered so that they are distinguishable? So first, notice there are issues of mathematical journal. They're probably distinguishable. I don't know why you'd have 40 issues of the same journal. Well, you know, maybe if it was like the first article or something. I don't know. Let's just say that they're, they're distinguishable. We can tell the difference. Okay, and we want to place them into four boxes with 10 issues per box. And the boxes are distinguishable. So this is distinguishable objects into, into distinguishable, uh, distinguishable objects into distinguishable boxes. Okay, so we start out, we're going to have 40 factorial. Okay, that's the total number of issues. And then we're going to divide out, right, 10 factorial for each one of the boxes. All right, and there we go. That's it. 40 factorial for the issues, the mathematics journal, and then we'll divide out the 10 for the ordering of each individual set of 10. Okay, that's our answer. So now the next set of problems are working with these indistinguishable objects and distinguishable boxes. Now, what we're going to use to do this is we're going to use the stars and bars again. Right, and you're going to see why in just a second. It actually works out really well. So let's suppose that I have this question. This question is how many ways are there to place 10 indistinguishable balls and eight distinguishable boxes? So I'm gonna use stars and bars here. I'm gonna have box one, box two, box three, box four, box five, box six, box seven, and then box eight. I don't need a line for box eight. And there are all my bars. Then I'm going to place my 10 distinguishable balls. Let's say, for example, I put two in, 3 into 2, 2 into 4, and 5 into 6. Okay? What I've basically done, 5 into 6, what I've basically done here, or more than basically, is I've said, okay, you know what? I've got, for each one of the bars, I've got a slot, and each one of the stars, I have a slot. So I have, I'm going to do a combination of, in this case, um, 8 plus 10 minus 1, and I'm going to choose slots for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, my 10, my 10 indistinguishable objects. This is thus going to equal C of 17, choose 10. Okay, and so these particular kinds of problems, we're going to use that stars and bars, uh, uh, bars method. Okay, and we'll utilize this theorem that we used for um, stars and bars as well. Okay, we just want to be able to recognize that's exactly what I'm doing, right? I am going to say that these objects, whether or not they be, you know, stars, okay, or fruit, or balls, whatever they are, we cannot tell their difference, but we can tell the difference in terms of the boxes. Okay, we can tell the difference in terms of the boxes, so we're going to use stars and bars. So this finishes uh, what we're going to be doing with distinguishable and indistinguishable objects. Um, one of the things you want to get with some of the other ones, uh, when we have, say, for example, indistinguishable objects and indistinguishable boxes, or distinguishable objects into indistinguishable boxes, they take a little bit more work. There's no easy closed formula that we can use. Some use summation, some you just have to kind of like uh, trial and error, see if you can find a function that will actually describe them. Okay, and that's where the cleverness of being a human being comes into play, okay? This completes the lecture um, on uh, boxes and objects, okay? And it also completes the lecture on section 6.5.